Hi folks, this is Tom with uh, FrugalPreppers.com. Uh, I just want to kind of do an update on my solar shed. It is springtime. Uh, already cut the grass once, need to cut it again. I've made some changes uh, to my solar shed. That's some things that didn't quite work out as expected. Um, and I've installed some new stuff and, and upgraded things a bit. So I just kind of wanted to cover where I was at with this. And uh, I'll show you here. So this might be a bit shaky. I'll try to hold it steady as I can. This is my solar panel. Um, and so what you see here is that we have the lights. Um, and I'll kind of get up closer here to kind of show this a little better. So basically the heart of my system here now uh, was, it was these gel cell batteries here. And I'm not quite sure. I'm going to double check these batteries because what I found out was I was like, I come out here, I charge them up with the battery charger. Things would run for a while and then it would go dead and I'm like man they're just not taking a charge from the solar panel something's up so anyway I, I ran into um, a friend that works at a junkyard and I said hey do you guys have ever come across any deep cycle batteries and um, they handed me this I did some computer work for them got a battery um, this battery is it's a deep cycle marine battery it's got like cold cranking amps on it but of course it doesn't say anything about amp hours um, it is a wet battery not sure how long it'll last but it does say deep cycle marine um, and so it, it holds a good charge it says it's a, a reconditioned battery from smart start um, and the date was never put on it as the one it was sold. However, there's a sticker up here that says 1212. And my guess is that means December of 2012. So it might be relatively new or newly reconditioned or who knows. It, it puts out a good full voltage. Um, I charged it up and just let it sit for a while and it kept a charge just fine. Um, so anyway, that now runs um, up to my panel. Now you'll notice that there's another set of wires here. This wire is what comes down from my charge controller to charge the batteries. And because that is such a thin gauge wire, if there was a short in that wire, you'd have the full uh, you know, amp hours of this battery trying to get through that thin wire. So I have put a 5 amp fuse in here, and that's just a couple of uh, F2 terminal connectors with a fuse stuck in the end of it. It makes a nice cheap fuse holder. I can get those terminals at the electronic surplus store, you know, already with the wire crimped in them for like 50 cents or something. So then I have my uh, uh, four gauge cable running all the way up to my panel. Okay, I come in, uh, my negative wire here uh, is all marked in black and that goes straight up to my inverter. Okay. Now my positive wire comes over, up, around, and comes down to this fuse, um, which is a, uh, a DC uh, 50 amp fuse, um, and then runs um, all the way up and back around and to the other side of my inverter. Now on my inverter I also run my internal light off of this, and that is hooked in with these two wires here and those run up they go through another 10 amp fuse and over to the light box now this let me see if I have the box still uh, light bulb so this light bulb here is actually one of these this is a 50 watt 12 volt marine bulb um, for RV and marine which you can buy these at Home Depot. Lowe's quit selling them. The other bulb here, this is like a little 3 watt LED bulb. And normally if I just need a little bit of light when I'm out here, this one's screwed in. And if I need more light, I screw this one in up here. Okay. And basically you turn this on. Now you see they're both running. And I can turn this off. Because if I just need, you know, a little bit of light when I'm out here in the shed just to grab something real quick, that's more than enough. If I'm going to be out here working on something, 
I can screw the big one in. Um, and so now my solar panel comes in from the roof of the shed right here on this wire and then rolls over here. I have it going to a little terminal block so I can disconnect it easily. Okay, then the solar panel comes down, the, the negative comes down here to the charge controller and the positive wire comes through a, another five amp fuse. And that fuse is there in case there is a short um, in the system and you know, just I always like to put fuses between components so I don't have fires. Um, and the automotive fuses seem to work great because they're made for 12 volts. Um, and then basically those hook into this little cheap Chinese uh, charge controller that I got on eBay for like $10. It handles 10 amps. It's a, it's a pulse width modulation. It's not an MPPT, so it's not as efficient, but does the job. Uh, and then these two wires here go down to my battery. And these wires here that have the little light bulb, this can handle a small uh, DC load. And that actually runs to a LED bulb that I mounted on the front of the shed. Now that just runs 24-7. It's a 1 watt LED bulb. Um, and it's bright enough for me to see to get in the shed and have a little bit of light to walk through the backyard. But it's not drawing a whole bunch of power. And since it's only 1 watt, I don't have to worry about a timer or anything. It can just run 24 hours a day. It doesn't put enough load on the system to really affect things too much. Um, so um, that's my basic solar system. Um, and what I'll do is go out here and kind of show you, you know, my inverter here, same inverter I had before. It's a 400 watt uh, uh, continuous 800 watt surge inverter. I run my weed whacker and stuff off of here and power tools and stuff all the time and don't have any problems with it ever. It's been a real rock solid inverter and I got it really cheap on eBay as a refurb. It did not come with any cables or anything which I didn't need um, but it works great. Um, and it came with a little plastic carrying case too. One other thing is over here this is my kind of little workbench area where, and I have this ba the old batteries under there but this is kind of where I just have a little spot to work on some stuff. And then, you know, I've got tools and chainsaws and battery chargers and oil and stuff up there on my little shelf. Um, so I have this little lamp here. This is another uh, bulb that's the RV 12-volt marine bulb. And those wires just actually run over here. All right, and I leave the negative one clipped on the negative side of the inverter. And when I want that light, I can just clip this on here. And as you see, I have light now. Um, so that's basically how that works those bulbs are really you know they're cheap and they're easy and yes they're not the most efficient thing but if you just need a light for a few minutes once a month they, they work great for that um, I've played with different LED bulbs and and this little LED bulb does a pretty good job but it's not as bright as the incandescents and the, and the lights a little off on it it's kind of wider um, so, basically, here is my little the outside of my shed, and this right here is my little uh, LED bulb. Basically, this is a light fixture from my back porch that's really old. I put up a nice new one, pretty one, and I took this old one. So I had a jar, which is missing, and now that's just my 12-volt LED bulb in there. And I just have that wire running out to it right here a couple wire nuts on it comes across here um, and then it actually just comes over here and runs right off the charge controller now the nice thing about that this charge controller will stop powering that when the battery gets down to the one mark so it's got three LEDs and you see it's in the, on the second one now and as it charges more it'll get to the third one and when that gets down to where this is low enough that will actually cut this off and the turn the light out and then I will know that something's going on or something's wrong when I look out my bedroom window at night and see the lights not running I can come out here and check my batteries and stuff um, so 
my uh, solar panel is just right up here uh, basically I'm holding that up I can't really see it but basically that's just my uh, panel here it's a little 10 watt panel uh, it's pretty warm actually <laughs> uh, but yeah that just sits up on top of the roof now in the winter I had it sitting in the back of the shed kind of aimed up like this because that's where the sun was but we're in uh, almost into May here the sun's pretty much dead overhead um, so that lays pretty flat on the roof there get some most of the sun eventually I'm gonna get a ladder and move that up closer to the top of the roof so that once the sun's going down in the evening I can still get a little bit from it and when I get this second panel for this I'm going to put it on the other side so I'll have kind of two of them charging but I got that panel on eBay for like $30 and it does the job and you know you're not going to run a house off of it or something but a little solar shed and then you know, my wires just kind of hanging down I gotta fasten that up but that goes in the back of my shed right there got my tomato and pepper plants my wife brought them outside they were inside in the window those are about ready to go in the ground and my old lawnmower that I dug out of the trash I had a thrown rod I found a rod and a piston and some rings on eBay rebuilt that and got it running runs good I've had it for about six years uh, but yeah I mean that's my solar shed you know it's basically just a way to have a light and run a few power tools and stuff uh, most of the stuff I got nearly free or really, really cheap. So, um, I, last time I sat down and added everything up, I had maybe $105 in everything. Because I got that inverter for like less than $20 free shipping. It was $14 free shipping on eBay. You know, I got the cost of the light bulbs. The charge controller was $10. Batteries free. All the cable and connectors I bought at... Uh, the electronic surplus store so I got those really cheap too um, any questions or comments let me know but that's uh, pretty much how my little solar shed works and how it's going thanks to Tom with frugal preppers all right folks I kind of wanted to show you how the uh, shed looks at nighttime here so I'm walking up on it trying not to trip and kill myself but um, this is the uh, one watt LED bulb up here um, you know it shines down and it's more than uh, sufficient for me to see to open the the lock and I will grab my keys here I don't know I won't I left them inside I'll go grab my keys and then I'll show you how the lights look inside at night but that basically just kind of lights up the front of the shed you know in the yard a little bit enough light to kind of see what you're doing all right so I got the keys and got the door open and so basically here we are we're running just the one uh, LED bulb and I will screw in the other bulb and see it lights the shed up you know just fine uh, so I'm just trying to take a look around here um, then of course I have also the uh, bulb over here which puts out quite a bit more light um, and then um, one of the things I want to kind of go over just a little bit here real quick is this this is just some you know regular old-fashioned uh, petroleum jelly from Family Dollar um, and one of the th problems that you're going to have if you work with a lot of batteries, especially ones that are open vented like this, and this will probably eventually go outside in the battery cage, um, it's going to be corrosion on your terminals. With uh, gel cells, you don't have the problem quite as much because they're completely sealed. Um, but you'll get corrosion on these terminals eventually um, just from the voltage in the air, especially in this hour time when it gets more humid anytime it's indoors so um, what I would uh, recommend is they make a whole bunch of like different kinds of rings and gels and stuff but petroleum jelly will coat the connections it will not allow air to get to the connection and it is a hundred percent you know conductive so you can actually put it on even before you uh, uh, 
bolt everything down. But you know, you just smear some on, like so, and you know, try to get it in all the little nooks and crannies that you can. And um, as you can see, if I come over here now where I put this jelly, and I'm just, I'm literally touching the jelly. I'm not even touching the metal and makes perfect contact for that light um, but yeah if you just kind of do all your connections this way um, it will really cut down on the cor corrosion a lot and it's relatively cheap and inexpensive to do and it doesn't have to be on real thick it just has to have a, a light coating on it and you are all set um, but this is also really good uh, for car batteries and stuff too um, you know you can get like the little corrosion rings and stuff um, and I guess that works um, they, they go down on the top posts and stuff on the battery like there's usually like a green one and a red one um, but this is you know like get a dollar or something at family dollar and um, works perfect so um, that's it I'm just gonna finish coating these up real quick and then I'm gonna go inside and probably go to bed put this video up at another time um, but yeah there's my charge controller you can see it's still um, I, I went around and used this inverter today to weed whack the entire yard with my electric weed whacker still got a fairly sufficient charge and uh, it's dark now so there's no uh, charge light on but you know anytime that green lights on it says that it's it's good enough to handle a load so that's it